Yo, what's up guys? I'm wearing my lucky black hat again tonight. Hopefully it'll be a win instead of a loss like last night, right? So let's find an opponent, shall we? Mm-hmm. All right, while we're waiting, let's see what my friends are online. Here is CN, whatever this is, but uh, my friend from China. Here is a former student of mine, Emma Jane, who seems to play every day now, which is fantastic. Here is uh, another chess player from Australia. I haven't spoken to them before, they just added me. Another chess player from Australia, I haven't spoken too much. This is a friend that I was asked to uh, add to uh, <laughs> as a friend because my friend wants me to know something, dig for information from them basically. This is a friend from Hong Kong. This is a friend from India. This is a former student, still kind of student every now and then from the US. And here's an opponent. All right, whoa, this guy's pretty strong. This will be good. All right, so we're gonna get a Sicilian. Let's hope that I can play better than last night, right? Okay, so he's going for some sort of Botvinnik system or something, I guess. Take that one. So we're gonna play a Accelerated Dragon. If knight c3, I can play knight g4 if I want to, or I, can, I don't know too, un, enough about that line, so I won't play that. Knight g4 is possible though, he just prevented it though. Uh, the way that I understand to play this line is you go knight takes d4, bishop c6 attacking e4, then you go uh, a5 maybe, no I think you go knight d7 first, and you're trying to swap the air, then you go a5 and put a knight on c5. This is pretty standard, I think. Knight c5, queen b6, queen b4, this type of thing. I'll eventually play b4. This guy seems to know just as much theory as me, <laughs> which is uh, not surprising. And I think I go queen b4 here, right? To be honest, I really don't know a lot of theory here, but I think black should be okay. Uh, I'm gonna go rook fd8, rook a oh, What? What's the idea of that? You know, does he wanna go a3? Maybe. Does my queen get trapped if I go a4 here? Let's do it anyway, shall we? Look, so wait, a3, queen takes b4. Oh, okay, I'll just kill that back. I think this is what I'm looking for. This, can I just blunder my queen? Jesus. Go for some cheapos. Okay, fell for that one. If he takes, I got bishop d4 pinning his queen. So at least I get something from my queen. Uh, of course, if queen takes bishop d4, that's the idea, guys. So it's what have I got for my queen now? Two pieces, okay. Well, we can still try to fight, right? Yeah, we're definitely up on the clock now. Let's play fast and see if we can pressure this guy. B5 will never be good because I get ultimate control of the dark squares. Oh, he went for it, okay. All right, well, let's take this file before he prevents me from taking that file. So things are <laughs> some, somehow looking uh, looking up a little bit, right? Uh, okay, so let's uh, attack this guy if we can. Oh shit! Uh, just defend that. That'll be fine. And then can we play f4? 
four maybe. And then knight takes. Whoa, okay. Well, e5. Oh, shit. I'm playing so shit tonight. Check. And then e5. Threatening some checkmating ideas, right? All right. <laughs> I really don't deserve to be in this game, but somehow I'm making it work. Okay. Rook g2 is a big threat here, as well as knight g2, as well as... <laughs> For some reason, I'm back in the game, guys. I don't know how, but it's happened. Uh, okay, so what about we check here? And then we go rook here. And then can we fork on g2? Looks possible. Um... Looks, looks like it's a good idea. I can't believe this game. <laughs> Unbelievable. I don't even know what to say about it, to be honest. Uh, I can probably mate this guy, really. Um, well, why not Why not get the exchange back, at least? Um, can I mate him? I'll give it a check and see what happens. Maybe it's mate, right? I'll take this guy. Attack. This guy, I guess. Come down here. That's unbelievable, this game, guys. <laughs> unbelievable. Let's make next move, rook takes eight seven. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Okay, guys, I don't know what happened in that game, but let, let's have a look at it, shall we? Um, I blundered my queen in like the opening against the 2230 guy and still managed to win. I do not know. You guys can see that uh, the game last night I should have won and lost and the game tonight I should have lost and won. It's very, very weird. <laughs> so let's check it out as uh, the usual process of um, of checking out the game, right? So e4, c5, c4, knight c6, knight e2, g6, d4. I'll flip it so you can see it from my perspective. Let me just have some water. All right, so takes, takes, bishop g7, bishop e3. This is all standard. Um, I play castles here because I don't, I know that it is theory, but I don't know the finer points of this move, knight g4, which usually goes queen takes d4, or g4, knight takes d4, queen d1, weird looking move. And then you can either go e5, e5, or knight e6 is the old move. But the thing is, I don't know anything about this, so that's why I didn't play it. I know it's theory, and I know it's the main line, but you know, you don't just play something like a monkey because you know it's theory, right? I, I don't know the stuff, so I didn't play it. But castling is, of course, fine. Uh, bishop e2, d6, castles, bishop d7, queen d2. We're basically just developing pieces here. Knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, bishop c6. And this is the standard plan for black as well. Um, uh, they must defend their e4 pawn, of course, and so f3, knight d7. What what black's aiming for is um, some control over the dark squares. For example, uh, if white exchanges here, which I used to think was good when I was a uh, young guy, um, it's actually bad because black gets all these dark, weak dark squares, right? So black's going to go a, uh, a5, queen b6, knight c5, and white's going to be a little bit weak on those uh, dark squares, right? Um, I used to think that was awesome for white because I didn't have positional judgment, right? Anyway, bishop e3. He keeps the bishops on because he's 2230. He understands chess better than I did when I was 16. Uh, a5. Just getting some control over some of these uh, dark squares here. Uh, so b3. Knight c5. All, all pretty standard. I think this is quite possibly theory. Rook b1, queen b6. He can't exploit this pin here. This is quite standard to go queen b6, queen b4 and try to exploit stuff. Uh, rook f c1, queen b4. And this is all, like I said, this is all fairly normal, except for me blundering my queen soon. So rook c2, a4. Okay, so I've I put a lot of pressure on his position, but I haven't kept an eye on this e7 pawn. Right, so he's got a standard idea here. I think a4 might be a mistake. 
Um, perhaps I should play like rook f to d or c8 here. Alright, could be the way to go. Um, but I didn't, right? So a4, he has this knight d5 move, which is a standard theme, but I was too stupid to notice it because I wasn't paying attention probably. And, um, and the point is now he attacks my queen and also this e7 square. I had already thought a couple moves before that if the knight goes to d5, I'll just take it, but I forgot that his queen will be attacking my queen, right? So I take, oh, if I take his queen, his point is that he inserts knight takes e7 check and wins a pawn, then recaptures, and this pawn's weak as well. So even if I say defend it like this, he can even just sack in exchange here and then regather and exchange here, right? Which sucks for black again, right? So that's not what I want. And so, <laughs> that's probably the best I could do, but uh, blundering my queen for a piece probably isn't good as I did here. Queen takes b4, I just go, oh crap, I lost the piece. Oh, I lost my queen for a minor piece. Save my bishop. And then he goes back and I swap and go rook a3. Just, I could have resigned here, but you know, you can, you can we'll go back on the video again. I was just like, oh, okay, whatever, I'll play a bit more, right? <laughs> and he goes b4. And I, I noticed the cheapo here because this bishop's a little loose and this diagonal's a little loose tactically. By the way, you might notice that every night the game is decided by tactics, right guys? So that's why you need to focus on learning tactics. Um, who cares what openings you know? Who cares that you studied Silman's book or something? Make sure that you, uh, or who cares if you studied Nimsevich's My System or something? These books are, are priceless, but if you're not good at tactics, you're still gonna lose, right? Um, I've lost a million games based on tactics as you've seen last night and tonight. This guy, 2230, very high rated player. Um, loses based on tactics as well. So knight e6, little bit cheap. Not really, that's a standard square to go to, which is why he played the standard bishop f1, missing this tactical idea, rook takes e3. I'm surprised that uh, he took back, uh, but I guess it's good for black anyway if he doesn't take back, right? I'm just wondering, yeah, it seems like it's still good for black. Um, well, it's Black has some positional compensation, if he, even if he doesn't take back though, right? He took back thinking, okay, bishop d4, um, and he's still going to be the exchange up. So he probably thought it would still be easy to win, but the problem is... Uh, by the way, by the way, I'll, the problem is that uh, control of this d4 square is very important. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean in a, in a variation soon. So rook a8, uh, it's very important to uh, not... I guess I could do it. I mean, one thing you guys need to remember, and anyone that wants to improve the chess, is that when you're pinning a piece, most of the time you don't need to take straight away, right? In this case, um, you don't need to take straight away, the queen is pinned, and if uh, he takes me, for example, let's say I did whatever, just some crap move, if he takes me, then he just helps my knight come to the d4 square, right? And then if he attacks me, I can just lock it in, right? And now this knight can never be removed because there's no minor pieces that can attack it. So really it doesn't matter if he exchanges for me, but I don't want to exchange for him unless he breaks the pin, right? So that's why I think it's a nice uh, finesse to just ignore the fact that I'm pinning him because I'm going to take eventually and just take the open file first, right? With with my rook. And um, so g3. And because I have this black uh, bishop, on this diagonal, I want to open up that diagonal. That's why I played f5, and he took, and I took, and now this bishop's a great piece as well. I'm actually threatening to take on f3 because of that pin, so that's why he defended, but which also gets out of the pin, which means I have to take his queen, and he takes back, and now things are pretty good. I don't want him to be able to do some sneaky stuff with c5, bishop c4, on this diagonal in the future. That's why I want to get to f6, but I went via g7, uh, so that that can't happen. And so rook, uh, bishop d3, king f6 guides both uh, weaknesses. And okay, so admittedly I'm down an exchange here, which is probably why he was still confident of winning, but it's, in my opinion, because I'm a guy that loves sacrificing the exchange, uh, in my opinion it's far from clear because if I ever get to put my knight on d4 and play e5, 
I think their knight will be very good compensation for the exchange, right? So he played rook e1, which doesn't threaten anything yet. He just wants to play double up skis, right? I play rook a3, which is a very active move because it attacks this bishop and even looks at this uh, f3 square uh, in, in some cases, right? So he plays rook c e2, and now if I take him, he takes me on e6 and I'm crushed. So I can't allow that to happen, and therefore I play bishop d7, which just completely solidifies everything. He can never take on e6, and he still has to worry about this pawn. Ah, uh, oh, this bishop. Um, well, so what have we got? We've got uh, five pawns each, and I'm down the exchange. But So he should still be winning, right? But it's... Um, yeah, he should probably still be winning. Um, but he's, I think his move... Uh, Rook e3 is not very good because my move f4 is a very strong response because it attacks his rook clearly. And if but if he moves his rook, I can take the bishop. So he must take me. And when I take back, you see suddenly my piece has come to life. This bishop's in big trouble. Um, okay, maybe he should take on e7 then. Oh no, I take on d3 with check. That's the big problem he has to face. So see again, again we see tactically. Um, I managed to save myself <laughs> from a lost position, right? <laughs> so he takes on h7, and I I can't play e5 yet, which I would love to do, uh, because he takes my rook, clearly. That's like, that's like what I did earlier on. <laughs> so first insert the check, important move. King g3, then e5. And now suddenly, um, black is doing very well. Surprisingly, down in exchange, but doing very well, because the king is caught in very close to what is a mating there, right? Like. I would like to just try and checkmate him here um, with some type of checkmating ideas, not forced right now, of course. But I mean, if I go, let's say, king g5, and he eight, checks me with his eight pawn, then I go king h5, then rook g2 will be mate. So he needs to be very careful of mating there, as I said just, just now. So um, he plays h3, rook g2 check. And you see um, the activity of the black pieces, even the proximity of the black king and the bishop, uh, puts the white king in a lot of danger, right? Um, I guess it's um, solving a lot of these puzzles with my students each day that makes me able to uh, get these tactical positions uh, from lost positions, right? Uh, so king h4, rook g7. Uh, rook g7 is really just a tempo move. I wanna gain a tempo attacking this guy so I can fork on g2 at worst, right? So um, this is just, in tactics, it's called a clearance move. You, you move the rook to clear the g, uh, to, to clear the g, uh, g2 square so I can fork. So rook g7, the bishop's attack, so he saves it, but then knight g2, check. And suddenly black is doing very well, right? Um, so king g5. And uh, as Nimsevich said, I believe, or maybe it was Tarash, I can't remember. When you see a good move, look for a better move. Maybe it was Laska, I can't remember. Um, but uh, of course I can take one of his rooks now, which would be pretty good for me, but I noticed that I can try to do something better. So rook g5, check. I can still take one of these rooks whenever I feel like it. King here. I just noticed something, guys. An even better move than what I did. Uh, if I play knight f4, it seems like he can't escape from rook h5 mate, right? Let's say he goes king h7. <laughs> yes. Because uh, he would like, after I go rook h5 uh, mate, or rook h5 check, he would like to go bishop uh, king g8. So I just go bishop e6, and it seems like rook h5 mate is forced. Next move. Amazing, right? So this is uh, what happens. Black's pieces are beautifully coordinated, and the white king is uh, very bad. So that's why that's possible. Uh, but I didn't do that. Um, I took his rook, which is, of course, also very good. And takes rook, h f uh, rook g3, uh, trying to take here. Um, I could have taken here. Uh, but it gets a little messy after, for example, what was I worried about during the game? Uh, for F4 looks annoying, right? Because of this. And, um, you know, this is, what else? There was something other than that that I was, I was worried about there. What was it? I think it might've been Rook D3. Uh, wait, where? Oh yeah, if I take here, I think I was worried about rook d3 uh, because the threat of taking here is quite annoying because my rook's a little bit loose here. I think that's what I was worried about. So um, that's why I went rook g3, 
but as I said, knight, uh, knight f4 before was a very nice move, just basically forcing mate. Um, rook g3, h4, and then cool move, rook uh, g8, threatening mate here. I think he must go king h7 now, but it's, uh, yeah, he must go king h7 there, I guess. And then the, the, the fight rages on. That looks like it's pretty forced, that move, actually. But he didn't find it. He went h5 thinking that after rook check, he can block with his bishop. But now after bishop h5, uh, f5, sorry, uh, the king is in a mating net and rook h7 is forced next move. So he doesn't move and then mate. So um, pretty interesting. Um, amazing that I could manage to blunder when I'm, you know, clearly in the, in the last two days not playing very well um, and managed to save myself, right? <laughs> Last two games, uh, I didn't. The, the, the yesterday, I deserved to win. Today, I deserved to lose. So I guess this is justice balancing out, right? Hope you guys enjoyed the game. Hope you guys enjoyed the analysis. Um, and uh, last three games, last three nights, are uh, very clear in every single game that studying tactics is important, right? So get your tactics learnt. Um, make sure you get good at them, and you'll be able to raise your rating by a lot. All right? Catch you guys tomorrow night.